The Goldsmith's Tale. One idea to rule the world. In a large market town in Bavaria, the central square was filled with the sounds of people shouting, the clattering of hooves upon the flagstones, and the bang of the auctioneer's hammer as the cattle were sold to the highest bidders. This was a long time ago, before electric lights or cars had been invented, and when the people paid for their animals, they paid with shiny gold coins. The gold coins were made by the town's goldsmith. He had a coal-fired furnace which he used to melt down heavy gold bars and old jewellery. He poured the liquid gold, like chocolate, into moulds to make the shiny little gold coins. His workshop was very secure and he had guards to look after all the gold. The farmers and shopkeepers of the town trusted the goldsmith to look after their gold. When the townsfolk gave him their gold, the goldsmith gave them a special certificate in return. In the name of the king, this certificate guarantees the safe return of ten gold coins whenever the bearer demands. The certificate guaranteed they would get their gold back whenever they wanted it. It even had a picture of the king's head on it to prove it was true. Pretty soon, just about everyone had their gold safely on deposit with the goldsmith. And he grew rich and very fat by charging a fee for keeping the gold safe. The certificates or paper money the townsfolk received in return for their gold could be used to go shopping in the marketplace as if they were the real gold coins themselves. Everybody was happy to take the paper money because they could swap it at the goldsmith's workshop for the real gold coins any time they liked. Now the goldsmith liked to keep his money in gold too, so it was only natural that when some of the shopkeepers and farmers in the town wanted to borrow gold to buy things for their shops or animals for their farms, they would go to the richest man in town for a loan. The goldsmith could have lent them his gold, but since everyone was just as happy with the certificates, the goldsmith kept the real gold money safe in his workshop and gave them the paper money instead. However, the goldsmith was lying awake one night and he had an idea. The townsfolk all seemed perfectly happy accepting his paper money instead of real gold. So what if he just printed up some extra paper money to lend to the townsfolk when he didn't really have the gold to give them. Who would ever know? Unless everyone wanted their gold back at the same time, he could print as much paper money as he wanted. Nobody would imagine that he didn't have the gold to give them. Now he would be really rich. Nothing beats lending gold that doesn't exist. Pretty soon, everybody was borrowing the goldsmith's paper money and the marketplace was busier than ever with people shopping for all the expensive things they could never afford. Beautiful carriages with magnificent horses lined the streets. The townsfolk wore gorgeous silk clothing and sparkling jewellery and ate chocolate with every meal. But as the shopkeepers and farmers collected even more and more money and the price of everything began to rise, the townsfolk started to wonder. While they had piles of money and they felt rich, it never seemed enough to keep up with the rising cost of everything. People began to refuse to accept the paper money and demanded that they be paid in real gold coins instead. The townsfolk started to gather in the square outside the goldsmith's workshop. The angry mob waved their certificates in the air and demanded the return of the gold that the paper money represented. But the goldsmith looked out of his window at the angry townsfolk and slammed his workshop door shut. His guards stood in front of his workshop with their helmets on and their swords raised to stop the townsfolk from entering. On the fourth day, they lost their patience and broke through the line of guards to find the workshop already empty. 
The certificates people had accepted for the things they sold were now worthless, and those with the most paper money, who thought they were the richest, were now suddenly the poorest. The goldsmith had lied to everyone. And nobody trusted paper money again for a very, very long time. But sure enough, people began to forget the lessons of the goldsmith's tale. In fact, if you look around today, the townsfolk all seem perfectly happy borrowing the goldsmith's paper money once again, just like the people in our story. The shops are busy with people using credit cards to buy all the things they could never afford. Beautiful cars and magnificent houses line the streets, and the townsfolk wear gorgeous designer clothing and take selfies with every meal. But they don't understand that the goldsmith is just up to his old tricks again, and that he will print more and more paper money until it becomes completely worthless once more.